Hey guys, and welcome back to another More with Moro's video. Today's video is going to be a Halloween decorate with me. I'm also gonna be sharing two recipes with you guys, one being a super delicious white chicken chili recipe that is perfect for this time of year and for the fall. And of course, I had to make something pumpkin related, so I made some banana pumpkin chocolate chip bread, and I will also be sharing that with you guys. I love this time of year. I love the fall, I love Halloween, I love everything about it, so I decided to do a little decorating. So of course, I had to share all of this with you guys, and I hope that you enjoy. All right guys, so excuse the football playing in the back. It is Sunday. Frank is watching the Dolphins, the Dolphins game. game. So I am getting ready to put some white chicken chili in the crock pot and I wanted to share this recipe with you guys and of course tell you everything that you will need. The exact measurements will be down below but I'll show you guys how to make it. So you're gonna need some chicken breast, a block of cream cheese, some heavy whipping cream or you could use half and half, white onion, chicken broth, two cans of white, I think they're called northern beans. Pretty sure this is the same thing as the white northern beans. So you're gonna need two cups or two cans of that, one can of whole kernel corn, a can of rotel, salt or pepper, salt. And then here's the spices that you're gonna need. You're gonna need chili powder, cayenne pepper, and cumin powder. And of course, whatever toppings you want to add on top, you could do salsa, you could do sour cream, cheese, avocado, cilantro, whatever you wanna do. But let's go ahead and get this in the crock pot. It's already two o'clock, so I'm probably going to have to cook this on high. That way it'll be done in time for dinner. I also forgot to mention that you're gonna need some garlic powder as well. I haven't had a chance to put it into the new spice jars that I got. You can find these on Amazon. So the spice jar comes in a set. It comes with um, even like the little uh, shaker top as well. But the labels you have to buy separately. So I'll leave that down below in the description and you guys can get your own spice set as well. I think so I know that this is a chili recipe, but I was just thinking, what if I did a whole dinner meal video or just a video in general of different soup recipes like four different soup recipes let me know if you guys would be interested in making or in seeing that because i will be definitely making so many soups i love to make soups and different kind of chilies around this time of year so if that's a video that you guys are interested in seeing Again, definitely let me know. So for this recipe, like I told you guys, you're going to need chicken breast. I am using two chicken breasts or around one pound. And then I am just now dicing up one white onion. And I told you guys that you're gonna need two cans of the white northern beans, one can of whole kernel corn and then one 10 ounce can of Rotel. You're also going to need one teaspoon of garlic powder, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of black pepper, one teaspoon of cumin, one teaspoon of chili powder, and then half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. And then you're going to need one 32 ounce container of chicken broth. Obviously I told you guys the block of cream cheese and then one fourth a cup of the heavy cream or half and half, whatever you wanna do. So what I end up doing is I just go ahead and put the chicken on the bottom, go ahead and sprinkle those nice, lovely spices all over the top. I drain my beans and my corn, put that on top, and then put the onions on top of that, and then put the can of Rotel on top of that. And then after you get done doing that, you're just going to pour your whole 32 ounces of chicken broth into your crock pot. Now you're gonna wait to put the cream cheese and the heavy cream in, you're gonna do that right before you serve it, like 15 minutes before you serve it. And I also went to Target this day and got a couple new things that I wanted to share and show you guys. I know this is Halloween and decorating, but of course I had to show you guys some new items. So I got a extended table runner. I have been on the hunt for these because we did get a new table. It's not as short as the other one, so I couldn't use all my old runners because it's so much longer now. So I found this really cute one from Target. It's the Threshold brand, and it ended up being the perfect length for our table, so I will be definitely getting more extended table runners from Target. Now they have like the regular size ones, and then just make sure that if you do have a longer table to get the one that says extended. And I love the colors, you guys know me, I love my neutral, so it went with the rest of the decorations in the house. And then I also found this really cute dark rug. I usually love my lighter colors, but I fell in love with the colors on this rug. 
so we got our two big boxes of Halloween decorations out of storage we have a lot of this is actually from our Halloween party from two years ago and we just ended up saving everything so we have some outdoor decorations we have some indoor decorations I know we have like some tombstones we actually have ones that light up oh we have I forgot that we put these in here I'm gonna go ahead and take those out we don't need those I think we kind of like ran out of space Do you guys remember last year we did the whole zoo theme so me and Frank were zoo keepers and the kids were all zoo animals for Halloween. So that's currently what's in here. But anyways, so we have a whole bunch of lights to go outside. We have a fog machine. Actually, we have two fog machines. Some bats. I'm definitely going to decorate with those because I like to put them on the windows. I might actually put some on the door as well. We have the projections. I think this is a ghost projection that we'll put on probably on the garage door. And just a whole bunch of random stuff. I actually don't know what this is. What is this? I have no idea. I'm kind of scared because I have no idea what that is. Babe, do you know what these are? I don't know what these are. What is that? I know. I'm like, what is that? You want to open one and see what it is? They're a little. What is that? Are they like little water changing tablets? I don't know. I don't know what that is. I'm about to find out. So Frank put it in water. We cannot figure out what that is and why it was with the Halloween decorations and it seems like there was different colors like there was like that purple color the orange color so if you guys know what those are please let us know I'm probably gonna feel so stupid later I'm gonna be reading the comments and be like oh so that's what it is but for right now I have no idea I don't know why we bought these but anyways we're gonna start putting all the lights outside and we got some more fog liquid today that's all the uh, carving, pumpkin carving stuff, but we need to take these lights out and start putting them outside. See if the batteries have lasted. I think you turn it on from the back. And then I just got this happy Halloween sign that I put on the door. Might have to get some new batteries. Oh, yep, I have to get some new batteries for this as well. My word. So for whatever reason, this little scary doorbell thing reminds me so much of that movie with Eddie Murphy. I think it's called Haunted Mansion, something like that. But for whatever reason, it reminds me of it. <laughs> The kids love it so much. Every time that they get home from school or if they're coming in and out, they have to press it every single time. And we also have the little Nest doorbell uh, camera. So you can change the sound. So whenever the kids press the, or if anybody like the mail lady or neighbor, friend or whatever, rings the doorbell, it plays back Halloween music, which is really cool. And then it will do it for Christmas as well, but play Christmas music. Um, but we're just getting the porch all nice and clean to put up all of our Halloween decorations. Now this year, I actually decided not to get real, real mums. I usually always get them every single year, but I can never keep them alive. So it just seems like, unless there's a secret, can you guys please tell me a secret to keeping mums alive? Because I, they won't last for longer than two weeks and I didn't want to waste money and have them die anyways. And then I was thinking about getting fake ones, but I never got a chance to go and get some and then they were out of stock. Hobby Lobby so I was like okay we're just not gonna do mums this year I'm like going on and on about flowers but seriously if you guys know the secret to keeping them alive please let me know because I love them so much and I feel like they complement the pumpkins and all the fall decorations all right so we're testing to see if the fog machine still works no, I just you think so 
and okay. whatever that's on. You already put the liquid and stuff and everything in it? Yeah. And then we're gonna see if it still works. So I'm going to attempt to see if I can get the spider, our huge spider friends, all the way up in that corner. I put a command strip on it to see if it will stick. You guys know how much I love my command hooks and strips. I use them literally for everything. I use them for our lights. I use a command strip for the doorbell. I don't have a lot of faith though because I feel like this is too much weight, but we're about to find out. So I don't even know why we got candy and started putting candy in the candy jar. It just felt right, but I know it's not going to last by the time Halloween gets here. I just know it. And of course, I had to put up some bats. I'll leave some links down below if you guys want to check them out. Are the perfect Halloween decoration. Another cute idea that I've been seeing lately is the witch's hat and people will hang it from their ceiling. I think that is a really cute idea as well, but I did not get them this year. But now I'm like thinking about it. I'm like, hmm, maybe I need to order some from Amazon and maybe hang some in my entry because what I, all I ended up doing was just adding those bats, a few little decorations, and then also putting some of this fake cobweb all over my fake flowers and I did add a little spider on there for the Halloween effect. I'll just do little things like that. That way I can still have my fall decorations but then add a little bit of a touch of Halloween without going too crazy. Like I like to do just a little bit, just something minimal, nothing too crazy. Even though I do love the houses that have like Halloween decked out everywhere. So about 15 minutes before your chili's done or before you're about to serve it. So about four, actually four hours into cooking it I went ahead and took the chicken breast out and started shredding it and then after you get done doing that you're going to add that back into your crock pot and then get your cream cheese and your one-fourth a cup of heavy cream and you're just going to cut it up in little blocks you don't have to I just do it because it just melts a lot easier that way so I go ahead and add those blocks and then the cream cheese or not the cream cheese the heavy cream mix that all together and then cook on high for another 15 to 20 minutes until it's all nice and melted incorporated and then it is all done and like i said you can add as many toppings as you want we did fritos and some cilantro and cheese but you could also do salsa avocado sour cream anything that you want to do So after we had dinner, I got all nice and comfy in my PJs, went ahead and put the blinds down, closed the curtains, and got all cozy because I was going to make some pumpkin banana chocolate chip bread. I don't know, something about like like this time of year, it gets a little bit darker, which I'm a little sad about, but something about it is really, really cozy at the same time, if that makes sense, and something about this time of year, of just being in your pajamas, listening to a Halloween movie in the background or listening to some music with a candle going like a pumpkin something smelling candle i don't know like nothing gets more cozy than that and i decided to add more of these bats on the mirror in our dining room i also have like some leftover like haunted that's what scarlet called them she said scary trees <laughs> so i put those scary trees on our little console table right there i feel like i need something else to go there i just don't know what yet so just for now i just did the bats and the little scary trees and now we are going to move on to making the pumpkin banana chocolate chip bread all right guys so it is now nighttime after decorating all day and we're gonna make some pumpkin banana chocolate chip bread so you are going to need and I'm getting a little nervous because I see how much flour I have I'm like is this three cups I don't know we're about to find out but you're gonna need some all-purpose flour. Again, all exact measurements will be down below. Uh, some chocolate chips, you can use mini, you can use milk chocolate. I am just using the semi-sweet chocolate morsels. Some baking soda, don't ask why I have this huge bag of baking soda. Some light brown sugar, or you could use uh, dark brown sugar. 
some pumpkin. Make sure it is 100% pumpkin and not pumpkin pie filling. I'm also adding one banana to this recipe. Three eggs, then you're gonna need three eggs, some granulated sugar, vanilla extract, some baking powder, and then some pumpkin pie spice. This is actually the last one that we grabbed today at Publix. Oh, and some canola oil. I don't have canola oil, so I am substituting for vegetable, but you could also substitute for applesauce as well. So come to find out, we did not have enough flour, so Frank had to run out to the store really quickly to get some. So for this recipe, like I told you guys, everything that you'll need, but I wanted to give you guys the exact measurements. You are going to need three cups of all-purpose flour. Right now I'm putting all of my dry ingredients into a bowl, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and then four teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. So you're just going to whisk that all together, and then in a separate bowl, you're gonna put all your wet ingredients. So two cups of canned pumpkin, two third cups of brown sugar, two third cups of white sugar, one cup of oil. I know that seems like so much when I was pouring that. I was like, oh my gosh, that is so much oil. Three eggs, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, one and a half cups of the chocolate chips. I ended up just using the whole bag. <laughs> so I ended up putting like three quarters into the actual mixture and then the rest I put on top of the bread. So you're just going to mix that all together with your mixer and I just slowly put everything together. So all the wet ingredients, I would mix it for a little bit, add some more, mix it together until it is all nice and incorporated. And I also wanted to say that you needed to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Now this would, easily fit two eight by four loaf pans. So if you guys wanna put this in two loaf pans, I didn't do that. I just made one big thing in my loaf pan, like just that one little pan right there. That's what I put everything in. And it made so, so much. I just had to cook it a little bit longer. So just keep that in mind because usually this will take 50 to 55 minutes, but it ended up taking like an hour and 10 minutes, I think. So just keep an eye on it. Put a little toothpick in it to make sure that it is cooked all the way through and you guys will have to wait to see the kids reactions to it. Is that good? Scarlett, do you like it? Yeah. Is it pumpkin. Pumpkin? Can you say pumpkin bread? Pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread. Pumpkin bread. With chocolate. Chocolate. Yes. I like chocolate. Alright, let's see if we can get Nolan's approval. What do you think, bud? Thumbs, thumbs up? That's a double thumbs thumb up. That double. was good. It was good. A double thumbs up. All right guys, so this is going to be the end of this Halloween video. I know I did not do a lot of decorating. I mainly did a lot. Actually, I, you know, I did do quite a bit outside, not so much inside. I just like to keep it a little bit minimal because I'm still enjoying my fall decorations all the way through till Thanksgiving. Well, actually knowing me, I'll probably decorate for Christmas before Thanksgiving, but you know what I mean? But I just added some extra cobwebs outside on our wreath and then around the pumpkins and outdoor decorations just to add a little bit of spookiness and a little bit more of that Halloween feel. But I loved how everything turned out, especially all of the lights and the projections. And then we ended up keeping our fog machine out on our porch. The kids have had so much fun with that as well. Um, at the same time, we have to like limit it because I'm, I'm a little worried that our neighbors are gonna think our house is on fire because so much fog comes out of it. 
but it has been so much fun and I know it'll be so much fun too when it is Halloween and we have trick-or-treaters and then we can have the fog machine going and just have like that extra little fun Halloween-ness. I don't know what I'm trying to say right now, but I do hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it gave you guys some ideas. Let me know in the comments down below. Are you decorating for Halloween? Do you decorate for Halloween? I would love to know. Definitely give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and you enjoyed all of the Halloween decorations. I just want to say thank you guys so, so, so much for watching. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I think I already said that now, but I will see you guys in my next video. Bye guys. Thank you.